Kyokushin is a style of karate founded by Oyama Masutatsu, a Korean-born Japanese citizen who carries quite the legacy in the martial arts. Now this is one of our most requested arts from our viewers, and with good reason. Training in Kyokushin Karate requires a will of steel, and it's not a good art for those who just want a light to moderate workout. This art is known around the world for its toughness, and it's also considered one of the most influential styles of full contact karate. One can often recognize Kyokushin by the delivery of rapid, full-powered body blows and as a leader in international competition. It is also renowned for its extensive kumite sessions, with practitioners often enduring 20, 30, even 40 or more matches in a row. Translated from Japanese as Ultimate Truth, it stands as an icon of discipline, conditioning, and character building. Now this is going to be the first of three episodes in which we attempt to catch a glimpse of this truth and take a look at the history of Kyokushin. So, how would one describe Kyokushin Karate? Founded in 1964 by Sosai Oyama Masutatsu, Kyokushin is predominantly a stand-up, full-contact, and self-defense-based style of martial art. It is a style of Japanese Karate, but you can trace a lot of its roots to the hard linear techniques of Shotokan combined with the many circular movements found in Goju-ryu. There are also elements of Judo and Kabuto, or weapons training, which makes Kyokushin a very powerful and effective combination of techniques. It also has continued to rise in popularity and has over 12 million practitioners all over the world. The founder of Kyokushin Karate is Masutatsu Oyama, often referred to as Masoyama. He was born on July 27, 1923 in what would later be South Korea. When he was still very young, he was sent to Manchuria, China to live on his sister's farm. Now, Oyama was first introduced to the martial arts at the age of nine when one of the farmers began teaching him Chinese Kenpo, called 18 Hands. Now, the 18 hands is very important in the history of martial arts. It was one of the foundations and is often found in the roots of many arts, including my own art of American Kenpo Karate. At the age of 12, Oyama returned back to Korea and continued his training, but this time in Korean Kenpo. Now, this was only the beginning of the multiple building blocks Oyama would use to develop his own system. In 1938, at the age of 15, Oyama traveled to Japan with his brother to enlist in the Japanese Imperial Army Aviation School. While he was there, he continued his training in karate, adding judo and boxing into his regimen. It was very clear that young Oyama was finding his way in the martial arts, constantly adding more and more skills to his arsenal. When World War II ended in 1945, Oyama left the aviation school and settled down in Tokyo and in 1946 enrolled in Waseda University School of Education and he pursued his study in sports science. Oyama pressed forward in his martial arts training, seeking out a Shotokan school run by Jigo Funakoshi, son of Gichin Funakoshi, who is the grandmaster and founder of the art, and then later he trained under Gichin Funakoshi himself. Oyama showed great skill and prowess and added yet another discipline, that of Gojuryu, founded by Chojin Miyagi. After several more years of training, Masayama had proven himself to be a highly skilled and formidable fighter. In his lifetime, he achieved the ranks of 4th Dan in Kodokan Judo, 4th Dan in Shotokan Karate, 7th Dan in Gojuryu Karate, and eventually 10th Dan as the founder of the art he would later form, Kyokushin Karate. As skilled and disciplined as Oyama became, the war had left him unsettled and he was noted for often getting into fights with US military police. He once said in a television interview, I lost many friends during the war. The very morning of their departure as kamikaze pilots, we ate breakfast together and in the evening their seats were empty. After the war ended, I was angry, so I fought as many US military as I could until my portrait was all over the police station. 
Masoyama sought a way to ground himself, and having become interested in the Samurai Bushido Code and what it represented, he had committed himself to spending three years in isolation to focus entirely on his training. He built a small shack in Mount Minobu in Japan, and there he had trained and lived. At one point, a student had joined him, but this was not a recreational retreat nor a weekend seminar. It was a harsh outdoor workout, and there were no modern conveniences. Nature was the dojo. He embodied a lot of what you see in martial arts films, glamorized training out in the wilderness and the waterfalls, becoming one with nature and in pure isolation. However, this wasn't Hollywood and this wasn't glamorous. It was pure, hardcore training. Masoyama kept a very strict regimen, training at least 12 hours a day, no days off, under cold waterfalls, breaking stones and logs, and even using trees as a makiwara. Now this was a bit overwhelming for her student who, after about six months, snuck away in the night, leaving Oyama to train in solitude. Oyama was dedicated to becoming one of the hardest and best fighters in the world. Unfortunately, after 14 months, his sponsor was unable to continue to offer support and Oyama returned back to civilization. He came back a hardened martial artist, winning competitions and earning respect, although he felt unresolved as he had not yet completed his three-year commitment in the mountains. At this point in his life, he knew that he wanted to dedicate himself to the martial arts, so on his own, he took off again for the mountains, where he would spend another 18 months of this rigorous routine. Complete solitude, out in nature, 12 hours a day. Masoyama was a different man this time when he returned. He was confident, powerful, and ready to show the world his craft. In 1950, Masoyama began to test and prove his power. In one of his more notable claims to fame, Oyama demonstrated his skill by fighting live bulls with his bare hands. He would reportedly knock them out with, a, with single strikes, and he had believed to have killed maybe three instantly, and wrestling others down to the ground and chopping their horns off with his bare hands. Now, I have seen some conflicting information in my research, and some people claim they weren't really bulls, but just steer that he wrestled down. Honestly, is that even less impressive if it is true? I mean, how many people do you know who could do that? In addition to battling bulls, he took on any challenger who wished to fight him. He toured North America, giving live demonstrations and exhibitions and even live on television. He won every single challenge, most fights lasting only a matter of seconds, and most of his opponents he knocked out with a single blow. His power was undisputable. It was even said that if you were to block one of his strikes, you would still break your arm, and if you didn't block, well, the result was often worse. This iron fortitude and exhibition of his skills earned Oyama the nickname God Hand. And as if うわーっと気合いかけると当人パッパッパッパッと切ったらね skill and power he showed wasn't enough, Oyama also wanted to lead the example of endurance. He introduced the world to one of the most grueling tests in the martial arts, the 100-man Kumite. This was a bare-knuckle battle lasting 100 consecutive rounds, with each round lasting a minute and a half to two minutes. And we're talking full contact, no pads, no breaks. So when an opponent was knocked out or time ran out, another opponent immediately jumped in. Now, in many cases, the fighter attempting the challenge would see the same opponents multiple times because there weren't always 100 people available. But the big difference is, those people had a chance to rest and the challenger would not. So this was 100 non-stop rounds of bare knuckle, full contact fighting. Masoyama not only completed this challenge, but then he did it three days in a row, completing 300 undefeated rounds. It's also been said that he was up for a fourth day, but no one wished to challenge him any further. Oyama would go on to establish Kyokushin as one of the leading and toughest karate systems in the world. So, what does the name Kyokushin mean? Founded officially in 1964, the full official name of the art is Kokusai Karate-do 
Renmei Kyokushin Kaikan, which I apologize if I pronounced it incorrectly, but it loosely translates to International Karate Organization Kyokushin Kaiken. In simpler terms, the art is usually referred to as Kyokushin Kai, which means Ultimate Truth Society, or even more common, just Kyokushin Ultimate Truth. The kanji for this name is a prominent emblem of the art. Masuyama held a very high regard for the samurai Miyamoto Musashi and his Book of the Five Rings. As a result, Oyama wanted the calligraphy of the kanji to resemble a sheathed sword in honor of Musashi. The calligraphy was designed by Oyama's close friend, Sensei Haramotoki. This official icon of Kyokushin is written in blue and embroidered on the uniform's left side of the chest. Another distinct symbol representative of the art of Kyokushin is the kanku. This is an emblem based on the kanku dai kata, which also means viewing the sky or raising sun. In this kata, the hands are raised to scan the sky and they form the symbol. The points in the kanku represent the fingers and symbolize ultimate peaks. The thicker sections of the right and left of the image are the wrists of the hands and they signify power and the center represents depth and infinity. The entire emblem is encircled, standing for circular activity and continuity. So the official uniform of Kyokushin is a solid white gi with the embroidered blue kanji of the name on the left side of the chest and the red badge of the kanku stitched on the left sleeve. Now, we're gonna take a more detailed look at the Kyokushin curriculum in the next episode, but let's quickly explore the fundamentals. The foundation of the curriculum is built on three components, sometimes called the three Ks, based on their Japanese names. These components are Kihon, Kata, and Kumite. Kihon generally means basics, and they are the fundamental movements and strikes. Blocks, punches, kicks, posture, breathing practices, throws, and body movement all fall under Kihon. They are the root and foundation of practice. If a student does not develop strong basics, then the rest of the training will be unreliable. Kata. Kata is short for the word katachi, which translates to form, shape, or pattern. Most katas are performed individually and are composed of basics, or kihon, in a sequence of pre-choreographed motions. By practicing basics and sequences repeatedly, it helps students to develop polished technique and also to help in memorization and understanding the relationship of the movements. Many martial arts have katas for a similar purpose. And in Kyokushin, katas are actually organized into two main categories, Northern Style and Southern Style. Oyama formed the Northern Style katas to draw from influences he learned in Shotokan Karate, while the Southern Style draws from his experience in Gojo Ryu. Then we have Kumite. Kumite means fighting or basically freestyle sparring. Now this is where skills built by the student during Kihon and Kata training are translated into real fighting skills and application. Now, although head protection is sometimes used and face punching is restricted, Kyokushin Kumite is usually unpadded and full contact fighting. In competition, opponents deliver heavy blows and powerful kicks in an attempt to submit or knock out their opponent. Now, Kihon, Kata, and Kumite are terms also found in other styles of Karate, but in the next episode, we're going to break down the Kyokushin training a little bit more to get a better idea of the curriculum. Now, this episode would not be complete if I didn't talk about us. Such a short, simple sound, yet with it comes a heavy and well-respected meaning. The word is a combination of two other Japanese words, oshi, which means push, and shinobu, which means endure. Kyokushin is an incredibly demanding art. It's very taxing on the body, it tests the spirits of the practitioner, and it represents one of the highest forms of discipline, technique, and commitment. So the sentiment behind us means to push oneself to the limit of ability in an under pressure, push past it and endure. In Kyokushin training, us carries many uses. It is used for all greetings and it replaces many words such as hello, goodbye, yes sir, yes ma'am, or in any instance in which you are given a command and you reply to agreement. When you arrive at the dojo and you bow, you say us. When you bow out at the end of the class, you say us. Your sensei gives you a command, you respond with us. When you perform a technique, you call out aloud us. If you receive a well-placed blow from an opponent in Kumite, you credit them with respect and you say Os. Os is everything in Kyokushin. It is dedication and determination. It is respect and appreciation. It is patience and perseverance. And it is a reminder for all Kyokushin students to push themselves and endure. So, if you could encapsulate the spirit of the art of Kyokushin into a single word or sentiment, Os is that word. Now, a word of caution. Os is a signature tradition of Kyokushin and its usage is well respected. But with that being said, you should also be aware that outside of a Kyokushin dojo, that might not always be the case. In Japanese culture, Os is also sometimes taken as a contraction of Ohio gozaimasu, which generally means good morning. 
However, its usage and inflection can change on context, and it's often considered slang or even possibly crude. So, for example, in English, when you meet somebody of higher rank or in a formal environment, or someone who's like a senior to you, you would say something along the lines of, hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, us in this context would be like saying, oh, hey, man, what's up? It can come across as you know, less respectful, sometimes crude, maybe even a little un uneducated. So while os carries a mark of respect in the Kyokushin dojo, don't assume it is always the case everywhere else. Some dojos and other arts use os in a similar manner, while others might find it offensive. So basically, do not use it in a dojo unless you know ahead of time if it is appreciated or not. Oyama also established the International Karate Organization. Throughout his lifetime, Masoyama continued to spread his craft and Kyokushin began to plant the seeds across the world. He would hand pick instructors and he would send them to new countries and territories where they would then draw a crowd and they would perform demonstrations out in public, drum up excitement and then spread word of mouth. Once interest rose, they would establish a school. As a result, Kyokushin now has 12 million practitioners or more and thousands of dojos spread across over 100 countries in the world. Masoyama never quit on his dedication. Remaining the true warrior that he was, he continued to push and endure even as he aged and health problems developed. In his later years, he was diagnosed with osteoarthritis, a joint disease that breaks down cartilage and bone. Now, despite this normally being a debilitating disease and condition, Oyama did not let it stop him and he continued his practice to demonstrate his craft, even still breaking wood and bricks and, and blocks and stones. In his final years, and despite never having been a smoker, Masuyama developed lung cancer. On April 26, 1994, at the age of 70, Masutatsu Oyama passed away. While his absence is heavily felt, he left behind a legacy of a man who became one of the best karatekas in the world and creating a system of martial arts that pushes boundaries, develops character, cultivates respect, and it retains the true Bushido spirit. He was a pioneer in the martial arts, and Kyokushin is now one of the leading systems of karate in the world. For more information on Masuyama and Kyokushin, and to get a copy of Miyamoto Musashi's Book of the Five Rings, I have included some links below in the description. And that concludes today's video. I would also like to extend a giant and sincere thank you to one of our most loyal viewers, Sensei Juan Ferentino Iorio from Melbourne, Australia, for his generous help and time in researching this project. Your contribution and friendship is greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this video looking on the origin of the